Welcome to the Content Amplification Podcast, where you will gain insight into real-life tactical and strategic elements to help you scale and grow your business. Now, let's get started with today's episode. Hi, welcome to episode number five, the Content Amplification Podcast. I'm Sean, why not your host? And I'm going to be talking today about email. And what I mean by email is... At the time of recording this, the date here, December 16th, and we have just come out of the Black Friday push uh, in the US. And if you're like anyone else, you would have gotten a ton of emails and uh, you know maybe some, some businesses that you wouldn't have thought taken advantage of Black Friday decided to put together a special promotion, or maybe you did as a professional service provider. Now, I'm not here to talk about what type of promotions to put on in emails, but what I want to talk to you about is more around the mindset and the way that people receive email and what email should be. You know, email has evolved over the years as being the only means of digital communication now to being a communication platform that that everyone has an email account or pretty much almost everyone. If you don't have an email account, I don't even know what planet you're on, but we're seeing a transition away from email as a main communication point. And what I mean by this is things like text messaging, messenger chat, you know, what other things like WhatsApp communication, messaging through Facebook, through Twitter, messaging through Instagram, People are turning to those platforms as primary communication points and less in the way of using email. Now, in your professional services business, as you are leveraging email, like email marketing, you need to change the way that you think about it. Think about email as a secondary means of communication. So it strongly suggests that you have something in your business to give away for free. So when somebody comes to your website and they aren't ready to commit by calling you or booking a consultation, there's something of value that's very focused to a pain point that they have. So if you're dealing in retirement, maybe you've got a checklist to self audit your retirement, or maybe you, you published a book and you, you have that there for download uh, ability for a couple chapters. And it doesn't matter what it is, but it has to be something that you're willing to give away for free. And we're going to have a whole episode on this topic about how to structure that and what's the best way. But the idea behind it is it needs to catch that person's attention. So think about it. Here's an example I use. It's not in the financial space, but it is in the the space of a towards purchase. And by towards purchase, that's something that that we want. So let's say you're in in the mindset of you want to install a pool for your family. And you know that this is a big investment. This is something that you could waste a lot of money with if you choose the wrong pool company to install it. And there might be things that you're not an expert on. In most cases, if you're not a pool installer, you're you're not an expert on it. So you're going to go online. You're going to start to look at some of the companies that are within your area that do sell and install in-ground pools. So you check out a couple of websites and one of them you come across on the website while you're doing your your researching phase has an opt-in and it says the ultimate guide to everything you need to know before making an informed pool purchase decision. Well, your reticular activating part of your brain is very hyper conscious of content that's going to help you make an informed decision. So seeing that is going to stand out to you. And if your fear is in wasting money, making the wrong decision, purchasing something that you didn't need, then when you see something that is the ultimate guide to making an informed purchasing decision, you're going to want that and you're going to opt in for it. Now, if the company's done a great job, they're going to give you supplemental secondary content that's going to come out to you via email. And that's going to add on to that experience. So you need to think about that the same way for your business. What primary question, problem, concern, and we talked about this earlier in other episodes, does your ideal avatar, your ideal client have? And what type of resource could you give away for free on your website that's going to be attractive to them to want to opt in for it? And that's where your email comes in. 
your email needs to add on to that. Would you like a piece of cake? Yes, I'd love a piece of cake. Would you like some whipped cream on that? Would you like some sprinkles? Would you like some ice cream? Your whipped cream, your sprinkles, your ice cream, those are your emails. Nobody wants your newsletter. I know that sounds harsh, but nobody wakes up in the morning wanting to describe to another darn newsletter. It just doesn't happen because a newsletter doesn't promise anything. It doesn't give that person something of value. A newsletter, what it screams is, hey, let me come into your inbox and brag about me. Me, 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 me. It's all about me. There is nothing in it in a newsletter when you say subscribe to my newsletter that implies you. By you, meaning your client. So anything that you send out needs to add on to that and give more and more wins, more and more value. Do you see where I'm getting here? We don't get somebody to give us their email address so that we can, in essence, spam them. And if you have a proper system in place, a proper CRM that is allowing you to segment your audience based on their, their desires, their problems, their needs, you can ultimately have valuable add-on information go out to them by email that is specific to their entire journey. So if I'm not interested as my primary means of concern when I come to your business as I want to plan for retirement, then your focus should not be giving me more information about retirement. If it's about investment, if it's about savings, then yes, there should be more streams of information coming out about that. And your focus should be help, help, help. How can I help them more? There's a big fear in the world out there, especially if you're not used to it, that if you start to give away all this information for free, that nobody's going to want to do business with you. In fact, it is the opposite of that. It's those people who are willing to help you that you want to do business with. I'll say that again. It's those people who are willing to help you now, I'll add now in there, that you'll want to do business with later. It's powerful when you think about it that way. One other thing that that, that really makes your emails ineffective is when they're extremely long. Lots of text, right? It's almost like you've taken an entire chapter of a book you wrote and pasted it into an email and said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to send out these long emails. People are going to read it because I'm awesome and they're going to want to love me and all this fantastic stuff. Wrong. Guess again. It's not going to be like that because people are used to now scrolling and micro consuming. People are used to scrolling and micro consuming. They're scrolling through their emails. Their emails are so inundated with so many messages coming through that they are picking and choosing what they want to consume. The first thing they're going to see is the name. Who is this person sending me the email? If you've done a great job at creating a relationship with them, then they will pay attention to that. But my question is, how are you branding yourself? I'm going to use financial advisors because that's one of the the main niche topics and niche areas that we work heavily in. If you're a financial advisor and you're branding yourself as your name, then the email that comes into the inbox better darn well be your name. So if you're out presenting as, you know, let's say myself as an example, if I was a financial advisor and I'm out doing a uh, on-the-stage talk about, you know, retirement planning and people know me as Sean Wynott, the financial advisor, and they opt into my list to get more tips on retirement, the first email that comes in the box better not be ABC Financial because they've never made that mental connection between who you are and the company and vice versa of that. If you're branding as your company and your company brand and you're new to the game, but people know the brand, then the name that comes into the inbox absolutely has to be visible as that brand because they're not going to associate who you are with it. 
So we get by the name. Next, we go into that subject line, right? We've got the, the first main title of the email. That needs to catch the attention of the person that's scrolling. If the subject line, if people can't get past the subject line of your email, what's in your email doesn't exist. You might as well just be sending a blank email because if they skim over it, delete it, mark it as spam, it doesn't exist. And now we've got subtext that we can put in there, which is a secondary email. Most emails have the ability to show two lines of text. You've got your main title, which is your subject, and then you got your secondary line. The idea is the main title, the main subject is to catch the attention. The second one is to talk about briefly, very briefly, it's just only one line of text, a bit more about what is an email. If your email CRM system allows you to fill that in, fill it in. Otherwise, it's going to try to pull whatever the first line of text is from your email and put it in there, which in most cases is not what you want them to see. And now we get into the main email. Once they click to open it, here's what their brain's doing. Your brain is always looking to survive, to burn as fewer calories as possible. When you make somebody think, when you make somebody have to process information that's very heavy, all text, very heavy. Your brain says, this is going to take a lot of energy to read this. This is going to take a lot of calories to burn. I don't want to do it. But if it's broken up in text chunks, no more than three lines, bullet points, right? If they have to scroll with their thumb on their phone more than three times, your email is too long. It's far better to send smaller bits of email chunks than it is one long email. Breaking it up with images. Don't have a lot of images. Your text to image ratio is going to hurt your spam rating. And a lot of spam filters are going to pick up on that if you have more images than you do text. But putting some images in there are going to help, especially if the images illustrate the point in which the email is trying to get across. If you have any kind of call to action, it should appear at least three times in that email. Once somewhere before they scroll, then at least two thirds of the way down. And then I also recommend in the sub, sub, uh, sub signature, like the postscript part of the, the PS part of the email to have it in there. And you get into more advanced email marketing, you're going to get into split testing and figure out which call to action they're going to click on, right? They should all go to the same call to action, but the way that you show it should be different. You should word it differently, talk about it differently. Maybe sometimes it's a button, maybe sometimes it's a hyperlink text. And you can really narrow it down to see what your audience is more susceptible to click on and then do more of that. So just to summarize, Email, not your primary means of communication. Once you've got in a relationship with somebody, by all means, it's a great way to communicate back and forth. It's not instant, meaning you're not going to be going in a back and forth chat minutes apart or seconds apart, right? You do that by text or messenger or anything like that. But you're not going to close a sale by somebody just receiving an email. Right? There needs to be something else to complement that. It's a secondary form of communication and it's a form in which you need to add upon that initial point of contact, that initial bit of information that they received, whether it was a, an opt-in to something or you had a chat with them. Very commonly in our practice, if we have a messenger chat with somebody, I build that relationship, I build that rapport and I say, hey, I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to give you some more tips on this, blah, 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 whatever it is. Right? Even if they're not signed up or they're not working with me currently like a coaching client and I know I can help them with some information, I can say, you know what? I got a couple tips that I'm going to send out to you over the next couple of days by email. Is that okay? Right? They're going to say yes. So look for that in your inbox, right? Secondary form of communication. So look at what you're doing with email and see if you can fix some of those issues you've heard me talk about in this episode. Go back, listen to them again, take notes. I know we talked about a lot in this episode. But if you can narrow down and streamline and get a better focus on your email, your email marketing, you're going to start to grow your business 
incrementally, step by step by step. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Content Amplification Podcast. If you have questions about how you can amplify your content strategy, go to amplifymycontent.com.